F by Rudyard Kipling. Joseph Rudyard Kipling was a renowned English writer known for his short stories, novels and poems. He was a journalist. Rudyard Kipling was born on 30th December 1865 in Bombay in the Bombay Presidency of British India to Alice MacDonald and John Lockwood. John Lockwood Kipling, a sculptor and pottery designer, was a principal and professor of architectural sculpture at the newly founded Sir Jamshedji Dijabai School of Art in Bombay. Kipling was taken to England for his studies at the age of five and was put in a boarding school. Kipling, one of the most popular poets of England, is chiefly remembered for his celebration of British imperialism, his tales and poems of British soldiers in India, and his tales for children. His most famous work is a classic, The Jungle Book. He was awarded the Nobel Prize for Literature in 1907. Much of his childhood was unhappy. After being taken to England by his parents at the age of six, he was left for five years at a foster home at South Sea, the horrors of which he described in the story Baba Black Sheep, which was published in the year 1888. We are poor little lambs who have lost our way. Ba, ba, ba. We are little black sheep who have gone astray. Ba. Gentlemen rankers out on the spree, damned from here to eternity. God, ha, mercy on us such as we, bah. So said he in Baba Black Sheep. He then went on to the United States College at Westward Ho, North Devon, a new inexpensive and inferior boarding school. The brutality he had to face there haunted Kipling for the rest of his life. Kipling returned to India in 1882 and worked for seven years as a journalist. He was quickly filling the journals he worked for with prose sketches and light verse. He published the verse collection Departmental Ditties in 1886, the short story collection Plain Tales from the Hills in 1888, and between 1887 and 1889 he brought out six paper-covered volumes of short stories. When Kipling returned to England in 1889, his reputation had preceded him and within a year he was acclaimed as one of the most brilliant prose writers of his time. His fame was redoubled upon the publication in 1892 of the verse collection Barak Room Ballads which contains such popular poems as Mandalay, Gungadin and Danny Diva. When the poet laureate Alfred Lord Tennyson died in 1892, Kipling was given the honor of that position. If Gungadin, the long recessional, Barak Room Battles, Mother of Mine, the female of the species, the white man's burden, the way through the woods, epitaphs of Va are some of his famous poems. The Light That Failed, the Nalaka, the story of West and East, which he wrote in collaboration with Volkot Ballister, Captains Courageous and Kim are some of his novels. Though Kipling excelled at telling a story, he was inconsistent in producing balanced, cohesive novels. Some of his short stories are The Man Who Would Be King, Jungle Book, Just for Stories, Ricky Tiki Tavi, Watches of the Night, Thrown Away, etc. If is undoubtedly one of the most beloved poems written by Rudyard Kipling. It was published in the Brothers Quiet Toast chapter of the books Rewards and Fairies, a 1910 collection of poetry and short stories. For more than a century, this poem has inspired millions of people all over the world and was voted as Britain's most favorite poem. It attracted nationwide attention immediately after its publication and is considered as an inspiring anthem all over the world. The poem can be perceived as a set of virtues laid down by the poet for becoming an ideal human being. 
The poem is addressed to his son John, bestowing him with precious advice and pearls of wisdom. This advice is given in the form of a contrast with the father describing a poor choice of action and then suggesting a better way to act or react. The phrase, if you can, is repeated several times, a clear instance of the literary technique anaphora, a deliberate repetition of a word or group of words at the beginning of a sentence in order to achieve an artistic effect. Every two lines starting with the conditional clause if has to be connected with the words in the last line, then you will be a man, my son. If is a didactic poem, that is a poem which gives instructions and moral lessons. It was also written as a tribute to British colonial statesman Sir, John, Sir Leander Starr Jameson and is written as an advice to his son John. It is in the form of a monologue. That is here only the father is speaking and the son is only a careful listener. The poem is framed as a long list of arguments with if and its result as then. It is of course a motivational and inspirational poem. The poem is also inspired by Sir Leander Starr Jameson, a British colonial statesman and politician who led the Jameson's raid in the Second Boer War, a war fought between British Empire and the two Boer states, Republic of Transvaal and the Orange Free State. Jameson's raid which took place between 29 December 1895 and 2 January 1896 was a carelessly undertaken botched up raid against the Transvaal Republic carried out by Sir Leander Starr Jameson and his company troops with the support of Cecil Rhodes, the Prime Minister of Cape Colony. The raid was intended to trigger an uprising among the British expatriate workers in Transvaal Republic. But there were complications and it was a failure. The Brits showed no inclination to revolt. The incident embarrassed the British government and Jameson was arrested and tried. But he was already being hailed as a hero by people in London who had an anti boss sentiment. He served only 15 months in prison and later became the Prime Minister of Cape Colony in South Africa. Kipling met Jameson through a common friend, Cecil Rhodes, the Prime Minister of Cape Colony at the time of the raid. He was very inspired by Jameson's character of taking responsibility for his actions, which he thought was heroic. Kipling wrote about Jameson in his autobiography, Something of Myself. If you can keep your head when all about you are losing theirs and blaming it on you, if you can trust yourself when all men doubt you but make allowance for their doubting too, then you will be a man, my son. If you can wait and not be tired by waiting or being lied about, don't deal in lies or being hated, don't give way to hating and yet don't look too good, no talk too wise. If you can dream and not make dreams your master, if you can think and not make thoughts your aim, if you can meet with triumph and disaster and treat those two imposters just the same, then you will be a man, my son. If you can bear to hear the truth you have spoken, twisted by knaves to make a trap for fools, or watch the things you gave your life to broken and stoop and build them up with worn out tools, then you will be a man, my son. If you can make one heap of all your winnings and risk it on one turn of pitch and toss and lose and start again at your beginnings and never breathe a word about your loss, then you will be a man, my son. If you can force your heart to nerve and sinew to serve your turn long after they are gone and so hold on when there is nothing in you except the will which says to them hold on, then you will be a man, my son. 
If you can talk with crowds and keep your virtue, or walk with kings nor lose a common touch, if neither force nor loving friends can hurt you, if all men count with you but none too much, if you can fill the unforgiving minute with 60 seconds worth of distance run, yours is the earth and everything that's in it, and which is more, you will be a man, my son. Kipling begins the poem by stating an ideal way to act during times of acute crisis. The poet advises his son to confront a tough situation in life with forbearance and calm. Even when people around him lose their self-control and throw arrows of criticism against him for no fault of his, he should face them in a composed manner and should not indulge in blame games. He should muster enough courage to believe in himself and his potential when everyone blames him or gives upon him. He should try to rise above their accusations and make allowance for others to have their own opinions. He should give a little thought or consideration to their doubt and try to find the reason for their suspicion. By losing his temper, he'll never be able to think properly and solve a problem. There will always be people around him who doubt his capabilities and demean his sincerity. But he should never be dented by such selfish aspersions. It would be unwise and arrogant to be intolerant of such criticisms. He should take such criticism in its stride and remain steadfast in the pursuit of his objectives. That is, if you believe you are right, but still people criticize you, hurt you, shout at you, don't bother. Just remember, in every game, only audience make noise, not players. Be a player, believe in yourself, and do the best. As Steve Jobs said, don't let the noise of other people's opinions drown out your own inner voice. The poet then talks about the need to have virtues like patience and honesty. If he patiently and persistently waits for the fruits of his perseverance and hard work, nothing can stop him. Patience can be taken as patience with others and with the world at large. Fortitude of character, that is, courage in pain or adversity, and stoicism, which is endurance of pain without complaint, are essential to make him an ideal human being. He should not let lies and hatred mire his character. Even when surrounded by people who demoralize him by spreading lies, he should try to remain aloof and should not be deflected from his chosen path of truth and honesty. He should learn to bear such evil designs silently. The father reminds his son that he should not show off his goodness and wisdom because common folk may not be comfortable with the ways of a perfect man. He should not be conceited or arrogant about his righteousness. Humility is essential to move ahead in life. The poet says that his son should have dreams and aspirations to reach great heights. Dream, dream, dream. Dreams transform into thoughts and thoughts result in action. So said the respected Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam. But he should not be guided by unrealistic dreams which control every waking moment of his life. He should not have slavish adherence to dreams. He should be able to give concrete shape to those dreams so that he can be successful. Dreams should spur him into action and not lull him into inaction and complacency. Here we can see an instance of personification. Dreams are personified as masters who control our life. The poet is reminding his son to have lofty thoughts without losing focus towards his goal. The father implores his son to remain impassive in the face of defeat and victory. He should be able to look upon his successes and failures in the same manner. 
he shouldn't be swayed by his small success and become arrogant or complacent nor should he grieve too much over his failures here triumph and disaster stand for success and failure they are personified as impostors cheaters or deceivers who can completely transform our character we should be able to accept the cheers of our success and bitterness of our failures in the same manner only an exemplary person can do that these lines are so inspiring that it is written on the entrance of the center court of wimbledon which is supposed to be the eden of tennis the father wants his son to remain unmoved when crooks or dishonest men distort his sensible utterances and to use the twisted versions to malign him very often in life we meet people who misinterpret or even deliberately twist the words we have spoken with the intention of mudslinging our reputation in such situations we should gather enough mental strength to bear it without retaliating sometimes in life the precious things that we earned with our sweat and blood get snatched away from us we should remain calm and patient and hold on to nerves even if the favorite things to which we have given our effort and time gets broken down without losing hope we must get up and gather the destroyed pieces from scrap and rebuild or recreate it using the remaining bits of physical and mental strength patience and mental toughness are the greatest assets which will come in handy then which in turn will make him a perfect man if due to any strange twist of fate he has taken a risk and lost all his accumulated wealth property and fame that he earned in life as if in one turn of a gambling game of pitch and toss he must stay calm without a word of complaint his loss should not rattle him instead of resigning to his fate and giving up on life he should fight back and rebuild it from the very beginning he should not lose his undying spirit and zeal to trudge on in life he should fight back to rebuild those lost fortunes by summoning the low strength of his body mind and soul he needs to push further with every muscle every nerve and heart even after the strength in each of them seems gone he has to hold on even if he is completely exhausted and has nothing left with him except his strong weary will power which can become an armor to lead him to success till the last breath his determination and creative instincts must burn bright will is written in capital letter will is here personified as someone who pushes us to move ahead with our head held high even when our body loses its strength and way down by the failures of life the poet urges his son not to be swayed by the ups and downs of life he should fit well with all sections of society he should not be corrupted by the machinations of status while moving along with the common folk he should not imbibe their sinful ways and keep his virtues or moral values intact at the same time while in the midst of royalty or elite people he should not become proud and forget his humble roots arrogance and snobbery should not grip him while moving along with people belonging to the higher ranks of society he should try to reach a stage in life when neither friends nor enemies can harm him he should become immune to the toxic taunts of his enemies this state of mind stems from his extreme confidence he should be able to treat everyone equally he should value everyone but not anyone in particular he has to maintain healthy relations with everyone the father tells his son that time is quite precious and it waits for no one he should respect time as time doesn't forgive anyone who wastes it time doesn't give us a second chance to retrieve our mistakes here unforgiving minute is a metaphoric phrase standing for time the poet asserts that every single minute of life is precious and he should use it productively our life span is too brief and we should make the most of it 
Time is a race where every second is precious. He is giving the example of a distant runner and exhorts his son to run as fast as he can in those 60 seconds and achieve his goal. While concluding the poem, the poet says to his son that if he fulfills all the conditions and inculcate all the virtues that the father mentioned, the entire universe would embrace him. No force can stop him from conquering the world and he will become a man in every sense of the word. Being called as a man is the greatest compliment one can get. The virtues expressed in the poem F are devoid of glamour and pretension. It is not worthy that Kipling talks nothing of accomplishing heroic deeds, wealth and fame. For him, the true measure of a man is his humility and his stoicism. Though this is a poem written by a father to his son, it has inspired many men in the journey of life on this earth so far. Now let's have a look at some of the literary devices employed in the poem. Kipling uses several literary devices to convey the message in the poem. The most prevalent literary devices used by Kipling is uh, irony. For instance, the line, if you could think, is contradicted by the author by saying, and not make thoughts your aim. Similarly, in urging the reader to both ignore doubt and make allowance for doubt, Kipling constructs a paradox. Irony and paradox is correct characteristics of the tone of the entire poem. Another literary device used by Kipling to make an impact on the reader is repetition. The phrase, if you can, is repeated several times to create an effect which is a typical example of anaphora, that is, a word or group of words repeated in the beginning of a line. Dream is personified as a master who can control every waking moment of life. Success is personified as triumph and failure is personified as disaster. Will is personified as a person who encourages us not to give up. We can also see metaphoric expressions throughout the poem. Unforgiving minute refers to time that waits for no man. It is like a race where every second is precious. Talk with crowds refers to all kinds of people that you interact with. Walk with kings here refers to socializing with higher rungs of society. Worn out tools here stands for feelings of exhaustion and can force everyone to give up. There are plenty of symbols in the poem. The word knaves symbolizes dishonest people. Kings symbolize people belonging to higher strata of society. The usage common touch symbolizes the noble virtue of humility. Alliteration was also employed to create a rhythm within the poem. For instance, phrases such as worn out tools and 60 seconds create interest and lent structure, flow and beauty to the poem. He also makes use of the rhyming scheme A A A A in the first verse. In the rest of the verses, he has used an A B A B B C B C D E D E rhyming scheme to keep the readers captivated. The poem is written in four octets, that is, a single octet, a stanza containing eight lines. Thank you.